So, you may be asking yourself, why are you replacing the transmission mounts? Or more commonly, do I need to replace the transmission mounts on my car? And the answer really is, it depends. Like a lot of things on this car, BMW made the transmission bushings, much like the subframe bushings, engine mounts, kind of everything made of rubber in this car. They made it really soft, they made it really comfortable. So that means there's very little in the way of NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. So you don't, you don't feel a lot of feedback through the shift, you don't feel a lot of shakes or vibrations or anything like that. And that's really nice for daily drive, but the problem is when you're really thrashing the car hard, uh, you get a lot of transmission movement, basically because the mounts are so soft, they can allow the transmission to wiggle side to side and front to back. Now, in some cases, that can cause miss shifts, and in some cases, it kind of just causes gear engagement to feel a bit funny when you're really thrashing the car. Because this is mainly a track car and kind of my fun car, I wanted to go stiffer. So if you're asking yourself, should I go, should I upgrade my transmission mounts, and what should I upgrade to? The answer is, it depends. You can go full polyurethane if you want to be really stiff and very little movement of the transmission at the expense of NVH. You can keep it stock, kind of nice and comfy, or you can try to find a middle ground like I'm trying to do with these hardened rubber bushings. All right, step number one to this process is obviously jack up your car. Let's get under the car and take a look at things. The transmission mounts are right here. They sit on top of this brace and hold up the tail of the transmission. So um, basically we're gonna, we're gonna jack up the transmission just a little bit to relieve pressure off here. Then it's a matter of removing two bolts here, two bolts there, and then the fasteners that hold the transmission mounts to the transmission brace and the transmission itself. And you'll notice I have the jack under the transmission. I have a big piece of fat padded cardboard underneath there just to minimize any gouging of the transmission housing or anything like that. Uh, hopefully I've jacked the transmission up just enough to reduce pressure on the transmission mounts and the cross member. Uh, we're going to test that by slowly undoing these bolts and seeing how much movement of the transmission there is. If there's a lot of sinking movement, that means we need to jack the transmission up higher. If it more or less kind of stays where it's supposed to be, we've jacked the transmission up high enough, we can kind of start taking this apart. But um, there are these four fasteners here that hold the transmission brace to the chassis, and we are gonna see how much transmission movement we get by loosening these. We need to undo this exhaust hanger because it's in the way of my socket. All right, I'm back and I have an inverted Torx and E10 socket to remove this exhaust hanger. Oh, no! All right, I'm back and I've recovered my runaway sockets. All right, so that bracket is now out of the way. All right, so the four bolts that hold the brace are out. Now we need to remove the fasteners that hold the bracket to the transmission mounts. Again, these are all 13 mils. All right, so the transmission cross brace is free. And we can now see our transmission mounts. So let's get a 13 mil wrench up here to get the top nut that's holding the other stud of this transmission uh, bushing onto the tail of the transmission. And we can drop these out. So I loosened this driver's side transmission mount and just enough to kind of be able to slip it out. And here is the stock one. So here's the top nut, much of the bottom fastener. You put your 13 mil wrench up there and kind of just loosen it. And the transmission is actually slotted. There's not like a hole it sits in. So you should loosen it a bit and it'll, you can pull it right out. So let's get the other side. Alright, that should be it. Alright, there's the other one. Piece of cake. So don't mind the neighbors playing loud music, but um, let's do a quick comparison. Here's the OEM mount, here's the Rogue Engineering mount. 
you notice the shape is totally different and crucially the studs on the aftermarket mount are longer that's actually a pretty common thing for aftermarket pnw transmission mounts just because they do help accommodate a lot of different pnw transmissions now you notice much like the oem mounts the road engineering mounts have a slot right here that mean that slot goes on the bottom it fits into a little um bump that's on the transmission brace to helps locate it it's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt to kind of line all this up, but it does help keep the mounts located and keep them from twisting. Here are the new engine transmission mounts, excuse me, sitting in place. There are bumps on the transmission cross number brace that have to line up with those detents. So let's get all of this lined up. So let's see if we got this about right. This is where it takes some trial and error because of those longer studs, it's a bit harder to kind of get it to all fit up there. Now I think we got that correct. So let me kind of just tighten up the top nut by hand. Okay, it took about five minutes of trial and error to kind of line up the cross brace and the transmission mounts, but I think I got it. So I snugged them up by, snugged the fasteners up by hand. So now let's try to get the top fasteners in place. I found a ratcheting 12 millimeter and a ratcheting 14 millimeter, but I couldn't find the ratcheting 13 millimeter, which is the most typical thing to happen in this garage ever. So I'm gonna, fast forward ahead to me being done tightening the top nuts on this just use your 13 millimeter wrench and go turn by turn by turn by turn by turn it takes forever all right i'm back it took about five minutes to do up the top nuts just because there's not much access you're going to go pretty slow but the top nuts for the transmission mounts are tightened now i'm kind of going around and tightening everything else all right so i'm going to redo up the little exhaust brace here and then we should be good to go. Everything looks snug, so let's get up front of the car and start it up. Alright, so I'm gonna check things on the car, make sure everything's still tight. All right, everything looks good. Let's go for a drive. All right, so the car is off jack stands. Um, we're gonna go for a test drive around the block and make sure kind of nothing seems amiss or awry. So let's go for it. softer than a polyurethane but they're still a solid hardened rubber mount but there's very little in the way of NBH at least to me um, however I'm gonna hold off on giving you a full review of these transmission mounts until I actually put some miles on them and kind of get a feel for how they are in all sorts of different situations but uh, in short, that is how you install transmission mounts on your 135i, 335i, or really any BMW with a manual transmission. Uh, hope this has been helpful or entertaining to you in some way. Uh, I'm going to go back home now.